Thank you, councillors. Good evening. Before opening the meeting, I have a notice of meeting recording. Clause 91 4 of the Governance and Meeting Conduct Law, local law provides the following. This public meeting is being recorded to improve access to the meeting for our community. The recording will be published and will be retained by Council in accordance with Council legal obligations. As a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. I now declare the meeting open. And in declaring the meeting open, I acknowledge the traditional owners. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting. We pay our respects to their elders and to elders from other communities who may be here today. The opening prayer, Almighty God, we humbly ask thee to bless and guide this council in its deliberations, so that we may truly preserve the welfare of the people whom we serve. Amen. No apologies, all members of council are here. Con uh, there's no citizenship, Jeremy. Confirmation of the minutes. Can I have someone move the minutes of the meeting? Yes. Move Councillor Rees, second to Councillor Curry. Wish to make any comment, Councillor Rees? No, thank you. Any further comment? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? The motion is carried. Conflict of interest disclosure. I'll be declaring a conflict of interest in 14.2. In 14.2. Thank you. No, re no reputation petitions. No hearing of deputations. Presentation of reports. So no council reports. Executive services. Corporate services. Sorry, Councillor Russell. Um, 8A. I would like to uh, move a motion uh, in for the condolence. Is there a second on that? Second. Second of Councillor Fuller. I would like to uh, send our condolences to the White family for the tragic death of uh, Rosemary and Basil White in a road accident close to home here. Thank you. No further discussion? No further discussion. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Motion's carried. Director of Corporate Services. Thank you, Mr Mayor. According to Council's Governance and Meeting Procedure Local Law, as soon as practicable after the meeting at which the Mayor is elected, and not later than the last Council meeting of the calendar year, which is this Council meeting, Council must fix the date... Council must fix the date and time and place of all ordinary council meetings for the following calendar year. The council's plan also includes an action to hold four council meetings each year in rural townships. This report seeks to do that. I must mention a correction to the dates listed in the published agenda. Council meetings are currently held on the third Tuesday of the month 
and I believe the agenda has them listed on the third Wednesday of the month. So we are going to the third Tuesday. Um, a correction report has been provided to you tonight and the recommendation is up on the screen and um, the, council, the recommendation is for Council to endorse the meeting next before. Thank you. Councillor Russell. I would like to change the... Sorry. I would like to uh, change the meeting dates. That's just me. The meeting dates or the... And, and the places. The places. So the council meeting scheduled for the moment. Can I have a second of the motion? Second. Second to the That the council meeting scheduled for the 14th of March 2017 be held at Carball. The council meeting scheduled for the 18th of April 2017 be held at Wangaratta. The council meeting scheduled for the 15th of August 2017 be held at Petrol Bar. And the council meeting scheduled for the 19th of September 2017 be held in Wangaratta. This will allow the councillors to enjoy the countryside of Carbo before daylight saving finishes. And by changing the dates of August September, councillors will not be required to travel to the country communities two months in running, two months running. Thank you. Thank you. So with the change to the dates and also the, the meetings, um, is there any further discussion? No further discussion, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Motion's carried. Thirteen point two. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This report deals with Council's Code of Conduct. Councillors have all signed the Code of Conduct along with the Oath of Office. The Local Government Act requires a new council to review its code within four months after a general election. Councillors have indicated that whilst they did not want to reduce the conduct arrangements of the signed code, that the functionality of the document, document could be improved by moving the legislation and policy material to appendices and taking out the introductions. A draft code has been prepared to accommodate this intent. In accordance with Council's major Council policy consultation local law, Council is required to give 28 days of public notice of a change to its code of conduct. This report recommends that Council commence this consultation in accordance with the Act and the local law. Any just, if someone like to move, that we endorse the record the count, draft Councillor Code of Conduct. Move Councillor Curry, seconded Councillor Fuller. Do you wish to speak to the motion? Anyone else wish to speak for or against the motion? If not, the motion is carried. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This report is presented to Council to recommend that Council gives public notice for a period of at least four weeks of its intention to renegotiate a number of leases prior to the adoption of the lease terms. Public notice is required where a lease term exceeds ten years. The leases concerned are listed in the Council recommendation. Three of the leases are for office space in the Wangaratta Government Centre and one lease is proposed to enable the construction of an Optus Tower at the HP Bar Reserve. Someone like to move the recommendation? Councillor Fuller? Second it? Councillor Buller. Um, Councillor Bussell. Any discussion? There's no discussion of the motion, no debate. Against, the motion's carried. Order. 
13.1 and I, I must uh, apologise to the gallery that I haven't asked for um, any questions from the gallery on the um, on the matters that we've so discussed but I'll, I'll take that from now. So. Right. 14.1, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so this item um, relates to our Section 86 Committees of Management. So Council, um, we have 16 Committees of Management throughout our municipality that take over the management of Council-owned facilities. Um, we have five Committees of Management, uh, sorry, Section 86 Special Committees of Management that have had nominations put forward for new members. So the recommendation for Council is to um, appoint the following representatives for the Everton Hall and Sports Complex Special Committee, the Mellor Public Hall and Park Special Committee, the North Wangaratta Sports Reserve Special Committee, the Wangaratta Showground Special Committee, and the Rowley Memorial Park Reserve Special Committee. Someone like to move the recommendation? Councillor Bussell, Councillor Ramey. Do you just speak to that, Councillor Bussell? No, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Any further discussion? Any questions from the gallery? No questions from the gallery. There's no dissension, so I'll, I'll declare the motion carried. And I now intend to leave the room as I have a, an indirect um, conflict of interest for the Progress Club. Likewise, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to have a committee member for Speakers Recreation Reserve. Um, in their absence, will take control of the meeting. Oh, I need to elect a chair. I, um... Is there any nominations? Thanks, Ruth. I'll take that. A seconder for that nomination. Thanks, Dave. Uh, all those uh, in favour of the vote? Great. Thank you. Sorry for the, um, uh, the lack of knowledge on that, but we'll uh, early days at the moment. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Um, so, so this report uh, relates to uh, the community grants program for our minor category that we have. So annually, Council um, has $50,000 allocated within our budget for distribution throughout our community for community groups. Um, this year, we had a significant number of community groups apply, all with really exciting projects. Um, the, the recommendation that's before Council tonight is for those groups that are listed within the recommendation um, come to a total allocation of $46,956. So they go through an assessment process, um, they're ranked, um, and the, the matrix that um, relates to the criteria that relates back to the allocation for the grants that meets the criteria. So the recommendation before Council tonight um, is for the endorsement of those groups listed. Uh, are there any questions from the gallery in relation to this 14.2? Thank you. Uh, do we have a mover for the, this motion? Thank you, Mark. Seconder. Dave Fuller. All those in favour? Listening. The motion is carried. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. So this report is brought to Council to consider the evaluation criteria for our Township Gravel Road Ceiling Program. So the Township Gravel Roads are those residential roads but in the uh, rural areas, so the townships such as the Greeters, the Oxleys, Evidence, Glen Rowans, Rogers, etc. So about six years ago, um, Council adopted a priority list of roads based on a very similar selection criteria to this, and we've been working our way through that list. 
there's still roads on that list, but when we uh, looked at it, uh, if we rescored them, the priorities changed dramatically. And this is mainly because new houses are being built. The key component of the evaluation is the number of houses on the roads. So um, what we're looking forward tonight is a recommendation that we adopt the selection criteria and then at budget time every year we prioritise the roads based on how the situation is at that time. So the recommendation tonight is that Council adopts the evaluation criteria and the program priorities are reviewed annually and the criteria is included in the rest of the recommendation as on the screen. Someone move the recommendation? I'll move it in two minutes. Questions from the gallery? Any questions from the gallery? Uh, has someone moved the recommendation? I'll move it for the mayor. Councillor Ben? Councillor Fuller? Any discussion, Councillor Ben? No, I don't think I need self explanatory. And uh, you know, the criteria is there, it's quite easy to understand. Anyone wish to, to discuss the matter? No dissension, I'll declare the motion carried. Thank 15.2. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. So, this report is presented to Council to consider the adoption of the Wangaratta Freight and Land Use Study 2016. So, this study was completed by the Department of Economic Development, Jobs, Transport and Resources, or DIGITAR, in conjunction with the Council. It really brings a whole uh, suite of other uh, studies and uh, takes findings out of those, uh, updates those and puts them in one document. Um, this document is, is part of a broader regional study and then there's smaller studies in each of the uh, in other cities. Um, this document is important because it, it identifies options for uh, future uh, road works but uh, in particular it opens the way for grant funding. So it's this sort of document that uh, the state and federal government looks to when we're applying for, for grants. It's become more important since this uh, paper was written as um, the lease of the Melbourne Wharfs, uh, some of that funds are allocated to freight routes and um, we've, as a region we have to prioritise our freight routes um, by the 20th of January next year. So this uh, document will uh, help that prioritisation and it will help reinforce our strength against some of the other areas. So the adoption is... But the recommendation is the Council adopt the Wingerator Frank Land Use Study 2016. Any questions from the gallery? No questions from the gallery. I have someone move the recommendation. Councillor Curry, Councillor Benton. Any discussion? I'll declare the motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This report is considering the appointment of a council representative to the North East Waste Resource Recovery Group, or Never Waste. Um, this is a particularly important group for us, given that our impending construction of an organics processing plant, the operation of a pretty significant landfill site, and a number of transfer stations. So it's a um, it's an area that we expend quite a bit of time, energy, and money. Um, the group is comprised of the seven municipalities of Alpine, Vanilla, Indigo, Mansfield, Tawong, Wangaratta and Wodonga, and also the three Alpine resort boards, um, Falls Creek, Mount Hotham and Mount Buller. Um, there is a forum group which comprises of a representative of each of those agencies, uh, and then the forum elects a number of representatives to the board. The recommendation tonight is that we appoint um, Alan Clark, our Director of Infrastructure Services, to represent us at the forum uh, and also to support him being elected by the forum to the board. Any questions from the gallery? Yes, Jim, as you... Thanks, Mr Mayor. I'll just speak very loudly. Um, we talked here about never waste, and yet it's not the abbreviation that's used here. Is there some confusion? 
there is in my mind anyway. Sorry, through the chair, that was my mistake. Um, the group used to be called Never Waste, and there has been a name change across the state. Um, the, the new abbreviation is NUREG, which doesn't sound quite as good. The old one was good, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Any further questions? I'd like to move the recommendation to Councillor Curry, second to Councillor Hustle. Any discussion? Clear the motion carried. Sixteen point one. Relevant services. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Sixteen point one. Wangaratta Planning Scheme Amendment C sixty seven. Um, consideration of the next steps. The report is presented to Council tonight to consider the twelve submissions in response to Wangaratta Planning Scheme Amendment C67, which is the Oxley Township Development Plan. Um, to the report summarises the key matters raised in the submissions. It seeks Council's agreement to make some changes to the exhibited documentation um, for the purpose of addressing some of the submissions, and to seek Council's agreement to request the appointment of a planning panel under Section 8 of the Planning Environment Act to consider the outstanding submissions. And the full recommendation is on the screen. Questions from the gallery? No questions from the gallery? And no questions from the gallery? Someone move the recommendation. Councillor Amy, we've got a second it. Councillor Lewis, you wish to speak to the motion? No, thank you. Anyone wish to speak? All against the motion. We declare the motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, item 16.2, sale of industrial land in North Mangaratta. This report is presented to Council at the completion of our required uh, actions under the Local Government Act to advertise our intentions to sell um, a parcel of land at 39 Buckler Road, North Wangaratta, uh, parcel of land being 1.766 hectares in size, um, to a, uh, a new manufacturing business um, that is proposing to relocate here from Tasmania. Uh, as there were no submissions received throughout the process, the recommendations tonight is that Council endorses the sale. <coughs> questions from the gallery? No questions from the gallery. I will move the recommendation. Councillor Curry, Councillor Lewis. Do you wish to speak to it? Yes. You do. Yes, I would. Um, just for the, uh, the gallery here, this is a great thing for Wangaratta. This is a, uh, a development of a new organisation. For Wangaratta, we're going to employ, or this organisation will be employing staff. They're a relocation from uh, outside of state and moving to the, uh, the Great North area there at Wangaratta. So uh, it's the lead step into more organisations moving this way under our council uh, regime and the new council for greater development, business development, and more employment for Wangaratta. Thank you. Any further discussion? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Motion is carried. With no special committee reports. Assemblies of councillors. Uh, there's three records of assemblies, a pre council briefing for them on the 22nd of November, the 28th of November, the council briefing for them, <coughs> pardon me, and the 5th of December, the council briefing for them. Any questions from the gallery? No questions from the gallery. Someone move the Recommend, oh, sorry, Mr. Summers. Sorry. Would you like to come forward and. Mr. Mayor, you're not 
other questions on this dead item? No. No. Okay. I was expecting you to get out of the blocks. <laughs> <laughs> I have someone move the recommendation, please. Move Councillor Bustle, second Councillor Ruiz. Any discussion? I'll declare the motion carried. No notice to the motion. We do have an item of confidential business, which we intend to handle now. So I have a motion that, uh, that we, we adjourn for the confidential business. Move Councillor Curry, second to Councillor Bustle. We can assure the gallery we'll only be a couple of minutes and we'll be back here for public question time.
Thank you for in your indulgence. It was a rather important matter that we need to make a decision on. <coughs> we'll now move into public question time. I've got a written question first, Mr. Summers, uh, Mr. Moore, uh, Mr. Lewis. Can I sit there if you... No, I'll get this far anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the streaming of council meetings is appreciated um, by many in, in very different ways. We're not aware of it's happening at the moment, but of course it is. As a piece of technology, it will be the subject of failure or intermittent faults. Can an apology display be developed for, <coughs> for display when the, normal when the normal streaming fails? This could then guide people to other alternatives. So I'm looking for some message on the screen which is indicated a failure and people don't just keep on searching for no reason at all. Could sound only be investigated in cases of full streaming failure? If you're careful, you will notice there have been two question marks today. Could, could people have to one? Well, just before I ask one of the officers to reply, Jim, um, we all had trouble at, uh, at Miller with, with our iPads, and uh, I think that the uh, reception with there was, was the reason that we weren't streaming properly. Please don't you answer that. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you for the question. Um, the answer is yes to the uh, part about an apology um, or a failure uh, display being able to be put onto the, the link so that people can stop searching. Um, we can do that. And we can also try some other things like having a lesser quality of picture, so it might be a little bit more grainy, but it won't use as much bandwidth uh, when we're uh, out of town. And yes to the sound only suggestion as well, Jim. Um, we can consider perhaps doing a live podcast and uh, we can also um, upload the audio and the picture the next day. So there are various options in relation to um, difficulties when you encounter them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ron Summers from Way Around. I, I would just like a quick question. I have a fair bit written down here, but I'll cut it short. Oh, the other one. I'm sorry. Um, what is the haste with the uh, time frame and the locations given for consultation? on the proposed development of the Urunga pool, considering it is uh, two weeks just prior to Christmas. Um, so, so the consultation is planned at this stage for a couple of reasons. So we know that this time of year lots of people, um, lots of children are out and about accessing our playgrounds um, and using our public spaces. So it's a time of year where um, families are are engaging in the kinds of activities that we wanted to ask them questions about. So we got some feedback from um, some of our schools that this would be a really great opportunity. Um, and indeed it has been in terms of us engaging with children um, around playgrounds and specifically also around the future use and opportunities for the Yuranga pool site. Um, so really it's, it's, it was, it's, it's timing in terms of it's not school holiday so people aren't, around, aren't away. Um, but people have the time available to participate in the consultation. And further on to that question, so how bold or brave can the ideas be and what value has been considered as appropriate? Was it a thousand dollars, ten thousand, hundred thousand or a million? As from my observations there are no funds committed. 
So the council's general process in terms of committing funds would be that we would scope up a project and that we would get um, proper costings and, and concept designs done so that we would be able to put forward to council for consideration quite a detailed budget submission. We can't do that until we know what the preferred idea is from the community. One of the reasons why we've gone out there and, and encouraged people in the community to be bold and, and innovative and tell us the ideas that they would love to see happen is that there's lots of opportunities for us to access funding um, and there's lots of different innovative ways that we can redevelop that site and we really wanted to consider all of them and, and be transparent in that process with the community. So um, that was really why we encouraged all and any ideas to come forward because there's lots of things that are possible. And just, I'm taking indulgence here. Um, I, I just wonder, in, to me it seems it's ha happening awful fast and there's been a lot of other things happened over here under awful fast with I don't think um, good outcomes but on, a, on a, a matter of public safety, namely the need for installation of the pedestrian crossings, um, where are we at with that? Because there's been discussions that have been taken for years and uh, I haven't seen, even though it's in the CBD master plan, any sign of anything happening as yet. Um, so the pedestrian crossings within the CBD master plan relate specifically for the actual CBD, so the Yurunga area um, isn't sorry, included sorry. in that area. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not associating with Yurunga, sorry, uh, Jamie, I'm, I'm just raising it as a, another issue that doesn't seem to be going anywhere, sorry. No, that's sorry, I misunderstood your question. Um, so there's actually significant planning happening at the moment around the installation of pedestrian crossings within the CBD, so... Um, we're working, in, and Alan may have some more information, but we're actually working with Big Roads quite closely on, on where those best um, those sites are best located within the CBD, and, and they'll be rolled out um, progressively over the next few years. So they, they won't be something that suddenly pop up, but, but we are working on them. So They're not actually a quick fix, then are they? Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Clint. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for, it's more of an acknowledgement. Uh, the death occurred last Wednesday of Mr. Dick West of El Dorado. Dick was a long-term employee of the shore of Wangaratta. Uh, I think it was well over 30 years. He'd been a grader driver and, at the, uh, and then moved on to superintendent of works. Uh, his funeral was held today at El Dorado and I think it would be nice if this council could um, pass some acknowledgement to his widow and family. I think that's already in hand. Oh, good, thank you. Other questions? Mr. Fox. Fox, Swamp Street. And as usual, I spent my working life in the CBD. And I see that the CBD, I believe the CBD is not properly recognised as our commercial hub. So tonight we've passed an investigative freight movement strategy, which I fully, fully endorse. However, my question is, and I ask this question of the three administrators on the first week that they came here three and a half years ago, and nothing has changed. The question is, is there an officer of the council prepared to make a public statement of an approximate date when a 7am to 7pm curfew on articulated trucks travelling through Murphy Street will be implemented. Give me a guesstimate, but don't ignore me, please. Brian, you're talking about a, an arterial road which is controlled by Vic Roads, and I doubt that that will ever occur while that road is a Vic Roads road. Um, the Roads Act is very clear that roads are for use by all. And 
I would be very surprised if uh, the state government uh, put those sort of restrictions on. I'm not sure that they've ever occurred anywhere else. And even if it became a uh, local council road, um, and I can't see that happening because that wouldn't happen yeah. unless there's an alternate arterial road. And even there, I'd be surprised if indeed it happens. So to answer your question, um, I can't be definitive, but I wouldn't think we'll, we'll see that happen at all. Then just to comment with your indulgence, Mr Mayor, I would like to see a request come under your signature from the Council to the Road Traffic Authority, State Government, requesting that, that, that we put a curfew, as I said, from 7 to 7, and I'd like to see the copy of the response. The reason I'm saying this is because I've been told the same story for 30 years that the RTA controls Murphy Street. I think if you're in the... The facts remain the same that they did 30 years ago and they still do, do today, so that's why the story's the same. Nothing has changed. Well, I'd, I'd appreciate copies of the in and out letters. Well, th that would have to be a resolution of council, Brian, so uh, that goes beyond uh, my um, delegated authority, so it'd have to be a resolution of council and... Uh, you, you say to the Ellen that you can't write to them and ask them what they think? Well, you're asking for us to uh, uh, ask them to do an action, and that action would have to come from council, not me as an individual officer. I thank you. I'm a bit mystified at the motion on item, I think it's 13.2. You're talking about inviting submissions in accordance with the major policy consultation local law, but it says nothing else. And I just contrast that with the uh, following motion on council leases, we went on to say give notice on the Wang Chronicle and the website, inviting written submissions by a certain time, and establishing a committee of council to hear any persons who want to be heard. My recollection is when the existing code of conduct was adopted by the administrators, uh, there was those extra riders for the motion, so we knew we were going to exist advertiser, we knew how long you had, and it did say there'd be a committee to hear um, anyone who wanted to be heard. So I'm just scratching my head as to why that's not here. Um, through the Chair, thanks Gary, I think you make a pretty good point. Um, the, I think the report sets out a fair bit of the detail um, that you've just outlined in terms of what the process is expected to be. Um, but I do agree that ordinarily the recommendation would be a bit more descriptive about setting some dates for those things and making it clear that those steps will occur. So um, I can assure you that those steps will occur um, and I do agree that um, on reflection that recommendation could have described those processes better. Jim's twisted my arm to uh, take the opportunity to wish... Who turned it off? Did you turn me off? <laughs> Jim Lewis has twisted my arm on behalf of everyone to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and the best for the festive season. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Other questions from the gallery? Yes, Phil. Let's run, Gary, thanks. Um, Phil Arkham, more you. Uh, about six months ago, the, there was a new contract made up for the removal of rubbish throughout the Kimberley. I don't know. Um, you've gone to uh, JJ Ritchie, I believe. Um, the council yards behind the more you, there used to be a recycling depot. For some reason, that recycling depot has been pulled over there, and um, I've been told that it was just. Um, forgotten to be put in the contract. Can I get that put back in? Because we have people 
wondering where they can bring their uh, recycling. There's just nowhere now. Thanks, Phil. So yes, JJ Richards uh, commenced as the recycling contractor um, a few months ago. Uh, actually met with them today. We've actually been uh, unhappy, very unhappy with their performance today. So um, we've tightened the thumb screws on them and had um, a lot of action the last week or so. So the general contract will hopefully improve. The recycling at the depot is unlikely we, we certainly don't intend to re-implement that at the moment. The transfer stations are there to collect the recycling and uh, it's unlikely that we're going, we've closed the depot down from a staff point of view and it's unlikely that we'll open, reopen it for public to deposit recycling. Um, as I said, um, we have that many campers now going up through the valley. They, we need somewhere for them to put their rubbish. None of them know where the um, the, the Rubbish collection is um, it was more than four k's out, five k's out of town. Um, that was the purpose of the people keep asking for it. We, we can take that that point on and review that as we, we go through, and we will be reviewing the whole uh, waste strategy. So we will take that on and consider it as part of that review. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes, Jim. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Some Wangaratta real estate is advertised as being on town bus routes. Nevertheless, many people living on town bus routes spend some time developing reasons why they can't use the bus. Four routes, more than 12 services every day, weekly, should be enough to solve some of the travelling needs of the public. Could some investigation by council and or felons help in looking at the town movement of traffic and looking at resolving to some extent congestion and parking problems by the use of town buses? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Jim. So that was actually one of the key points that was raised as part of the um, consultation in the master plan around accessibility and understanding of public transport. Um, and one of the priority areas that came out of that was around how we could do exactly what you're suggesting and, and utilise public transport better to take some of the pressure off um, the, the, the vehicle numbers within the CBD. So, so that's one of the projects that we'll be working through. Um, and one of the, the things that the community told us was that it's somewhat around a lack of understanding around the bus routes that are available and, and where the stops are and, and what the timetabling is. So, so we think that perhaps some, some increased promotion of that may help. Can I just make one further comment, please, Mr Mayor? Yeah. It's interesting to note from what you've said, though, that um, Fallon's put a whole one-page ad in the paper to try and sort of sell more seats, I presume. Um, and at the same time, possibly, this council may be deciding to reduce the, um, the, the rates for parking. Mm. It seems, seems there's a bit of a conflict there between the two groups, unfortunately. No question mark. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Lloyd. Sorry, um, my name's Matthew Corrin. Could you please come up? Oh, sorry. Sorry, my name is Matthew LaCroix. I recently moved here about six months ago um, out to near St John's, Warwick Road area there. There's lots of new estates being built out there. My children, similar thing with the buses, and I actually asked about the bus routes. I was told that they're fixed by the state government, can't be changed. With all the new estates being built yeah. and school kids trying to get to school, and that high school and Phillipson Street and all the primary school there is just amazing. Thousands of children all at one time during the day, within an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening. And yeah, just getting to the buses and on and off buses with the new estates and the new houses being built, with young families moving in, the bus routes haven't been changed for years and they're not compatible. Yeah. And, and it runs along very much like the gentleman was saying as well. It's a bit out of alignment with what's going on in the development. 
Yep. Um, just a quick comment. I've had another issue just recently with, with bus routes and spoken directly to felons. And it is done by the state government. And I would say to, to lobby felons bus lines that will send to the state government to increase their bus numbers because the buses are paid for by, by felons through the state government on contracts that they get. And uh, this is the indication from Brock Felon Direct that, um, that yes, more bus uh, routes and that are needed. But stops, we, on the, the stops on the actual nature strips need to be built in uh, your state. As well, too. Yes, well, that might be a thing to, to speak to Felon's Bus Lines and get a panel, or it could be get people and sign a petition, perhaps, mm -hmm. and hopefully he can lobby them with the state governments to also increase routes down into those areas, too. That there are lots of new estates now being built mm -hmm. with no bus services out there, and they have to walk two or three kilometres to get on the bus. It's a great comment. Thank you. Thank you. Any further? Any further questions? No further questions before closing the meeting. I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and look forward to seeing you at the first council meeting in 2017. And thank you for your attendance tonight. There is a cup of tea there if you'd like to stay. I'll declare the meeting closed.